Welcome back, everyone. So this week, we've been talking about business plans and how a company needs to plan what they're going to do and how they're going to do uh, whatever it is they decide to do. Um, so, so far, we've talked about creating a business plan and having, for example, a goal of what the business uh, strives for. And the goal isn't necessarily just, I want to make a product or I want to make a service. Maybe the goal is, I want to make the world a better place, or I want to make, um, you know, Chunchan uh, a cleaner place, or um, reduce housing prices, something like that, right? So goals can be many things, and they don't necessarily have to be the product that the company is going to produce. Um, it could be uh, just what they want to accomplish, usually in the long run. Okay. So um, we've been talking about the business plan, the goals, and to figure out how a company is going to achieve whatever it is they're going to achieve, um, they really need to think about their customers. So we talked about uh, who are the customers, uh, what is, um, what are they willing to uh, pay for a service, are they willing to pay for a service, what do they need from this service. So Whenever we're thinking about customers, I made a kind of uh, chart that basically has a, a line between customers and product. Product or service. So whatever it is that the company is providing, right? We have customers, we have a product. And I, if you remember, I drew kind of an arrow between them and it made this kind of cycle. Okay. So what I want to talk about right now is um, what this cycle is and how companies can maintain um, their uh, business over time. And basically what can happen is for a lot of businesses, um, people change, the tastes change. So imagine Korea in the 1970s. It's a little bit different than Korea now, right? Um, let's say Western movies, Western culture, Chinese culture, maybe Russian culture, all of these things are affecting Korea a lot more because in the 1970s, we didn't have the internet. So Korea is bringing in a lot of ideas, but Korea is also exporting a lot more ideas outside of the country. So this has made Korea um, uh, a little bit more aware in some ways about the internal culture and what kind of internal culture can be exported. And also, um, that, that somewhat shapes the, the local culture as well. But then also, um, a lot of different cultures have been imported as well. So Korea is a really different place than it was in the 1970s, which is why um, sometimes older generations really don't understand young people because the culture gap is just too much, right? So what I'm talking about here is if we think about our customers, if we started a company in 1970s, um, what kind of a product um, could survive for that long? So let's think about this for a second. If you started a kimbap company or a, maybe a guksu shop in the 1970s, your product probably hasn't had to change very much. You probably haven't really needed to innovate, especially if you're known as like a good kimbap or guksu place. Um, the product is, you know, kimbap guksu. Everyone still eats that, right? So that part of the culture hasn't really changed. But you probably aren't selling a lot more kimbap or guksu than you were in 1970s. Maybe because people probably have more, um, uh, more income that they're willing to spend on food outside. Um, people cook at home a little bit less. So maybe because of that, you're making a little bit more money or selling more product. But for the most part, that's a business that doesn't really need to change because people are going to continue to buy guksu and kimbap. Okay. But what are some of the things that um, would change? Um, so for example, uh, let's imagine that you were producing um, pants, uh, you know, like, like, Paji. If you were producing Paji in the 1970s, um, do you think that the style of the 1970s Paji in Korea would be the same as now? And, you know, maybe a couple people still like to dress in, in 1970s style, but very few people do. The style has changed quite a bit, right? Um, the way that Koreans dress now is um, very modern, like much more modernized than, um, than actually a lot of places, okay? So, 
In this case, if our product was pants, and it's the 1970s, so we'll say pants in the 70s, um, do pant styles change over time? Well, no, we could still produce the same pants that we've always produced. We could continually produce 1970s pants. That's no problem. What changes? Well, the customers change, and what the customers want slash need, we talked about this a little bit, what the customers want or need changes over time, right? So the fashion industry itself actually changes really quickly. So uh, summer fashion, winter fashion, even fall fashion, spring fashion, those kind of things. So if you're still producing pants from the 1970s, um, unless it was just for some reason a really popular style, and it still is, most likely you've had to change your style. Um, 1970s Korea, I doubt, had blue jeans, for example. They probably didn't have blue jeans. Or maybe blue jeans were really expensive. Um, so now, pretty much anyone can get blue jeans for, I think, Manwon and Emart, right? So um, the style has changed quite a bit. The way we buy, Emart now stocks these types of pants as well. So the customers have changed. Their wants and needs change over time with their style. So uh, changes in style, right? Um, and even in the, you know, the 2000s, 2010s, um, the style from 2000s are very different from the styles in the 90s. 90s is very different from the 80s. Um, not only in Korea, pretty much, pretty much everywhere, right? So pants in the 70s actually have to change over time. So maybe pants in the 80s, um, pants 80s, and then also pants 90s and 2000s, 2000, let's say 10s, and then 2017s. Um, I'm trying to think. In the last several years, there's kind of been some uh, small fashion changes, but pretty much everyone is still more or less dressing the same way that they did okay? um, in, let's say, the last five years or so. It hasn't changed a lot. So, but from 2017, to the 1970s, it's changed a lot from maybe 2015 or 2010 even to 2017. Fashion hasn't changed too much in, in most cases. Um, so the point is the customers have changed over time. What if I was selling, um, let's say, $100,000 worth of pants per year? Okay. So $100,000 worth of pants per year in the 1970s. If I still produced the same pants, sorry, let me erase this. If I still produced the same pants every year since the 1970s, do you think that I would still be making $100,000 per year? Let's say it was popular in the 70s. Was that, pop, was that same style popular in the 80s? No. So I would probably make, let's say maybe I made $60,000 in the 1980s. Well, uh, 90s, kind of, I don't know, there's a lot of different styles, but maybe grunge style or something. So maybe I only made $12,000, right? Remember what we talked about with um, costs and revenue. If I only made this amount of money, then most likely I am uh, not making a profit. I'm making a deficit, actually. So if I'm in deficit to produce my product, the business can't stay up unless I have another income coming in. Okay, so at this stage, basically, we see that less people are buying our pants. Well, why is that? It's because the customers have changed. Style has changed. Fashion has changed. And if we are not considering our customers and what our customers want, what our customers need, then um, we're going to see a drop in revenue. Okay? If we see a drop in revenue under the point where we can produce a product, then we're in a deficit, and if we don't fix it, we will go out of business. Okay. So what I really want to point out here is, you know, even though we might have a kind of rise, because maybe in the 19 or the early 2000s, somebody liked 70s style again. Sometimes they come back in style for a little bit. So we see a little bit of a bump, and we think, ah, oh, our pants are going to be popular again. 
well, maybe not. Maybe this is just a recurring fad, but we'll never be back to where we were in the 1970s. So we can either try to hope for these bumps that will occur every few years, or we can listen to our customers, figure out what they want and what they need constantly, basically, just an ever, ever, ever going process about what the customers actually want, and then revise our business model based on that. So in the 1980s, well, what are people buying now? What do, what pants are cool? What pants are in style? Well, if we modify our pant style just a little bit, then maybe we have a little bit of a dip whenever people stop buying our pants. We notice that there's a dip, right? We identify what pants people would buy, so then we modify it, and then we get basically back on track, okay? And then we can monitor um, the pant style that we're currently selling until it starts to go down a little bit, and then we can change it again and go back on track. So in this case, we've actually continued to make quite a bit of money just by listening to our customers over and over again. Okay? The reason I'm talking about this is because most businesses, oh, can I say most businesses? A lot of businesses don't really listen to their customers. They think that they know what their customers want better than what their customers, uh, better than their customers know. Um, so basically what this means is if the company is trying to drive or tell the customers what they want, they better have a different business model that lets them actually control the customer's way of thinking. Okay, and a lot of companies don't have that. So most people are going to buy pants and they want the pants that they want. I don't necessarily care about the company that's making the pants so much. Um, I just want the pants that I want, right? So. Whenever you're making your business, think about who your customers are and don't just make a business plan once. So we talked about the business plan. We talked about the business plan and then we had our goal and the goal basically doesn't change, right? So we have our goal, the goal doesn't change. Our customers, our customers don't really change, but they might. Um, so for example, um, the people who are in their 20s in the 1970s, maybe we want to keep that group as customers. Maybe we don't want to focus on 20-year-olds. We want to focus on people who are teens in their 70s and then grow with them. That might be another customer group, right? So our customers um, might change, might not change the group, depending on how we group it. Um, but then our product should change over time. There's very few products that are going to stay um, as relevant as kimbap, right? Uh, food, toilet paper, like things that people need um, will stay relevant. But pants, for example, if you are not in style, people will not buy your pants, okay? So whenever you're thinking about business, and this is especially true for IT, um, Programs that are very old, programs that are not maintained or they don't work with smartphones, people don't use them anymore, right? So even for, or can I say, especially for technology, people are very democratic about the way they use technology. So if somebody is offering something better, it's very easy to switch usually um, for most products. Some products like email, people are reluctant to switch, but most products, people are willing to switch as long as they see that this other product is much better. So, especially for IT, we constantly have to think about our customers and um, what kind of things our customers want and need and what are the times that people tend to change what they want. So imagine that this was pants again. Well, let's say that the 1980s started. So 1980s started and we see a drop in pants. Well, let's say the 1990s started, we see a drop, right? So every every 10 years or so, people change their style for the type of pants they were interested in. That means that next time we can predict that in the 2000s, if we don't change our pant style before that, then it's going to drop again, right? So maybe we can kind of uh, figure out what style is interesting before it drops and then hopefully um, increase our profit. Okay. But I just wanted to talk about customers and especially putting the customers first. Um, 
a lot of companies don't build in a way to take in opinions from their customers and constantly be improving their product. So whenever you're planning your business, you really need to ask yourself, how can I include my customer's voice in this? If it's just about how much money they spend, it's not good enough, right? You really need a way to reach out and contact your customers. And with IT, that's never been easier than, than, than now, okay? So that's all I want to talk about today. Thank you very much.